there is nothing what built-in effects can't do. And there are things the Saber plugin isn't even capable of. I was inspired by the cool guys of Cinecom.net. They really make After Effects tutorials in such an entertaining way. Really likable guys over there in Belgium. And Jordi from Cinecom said this. You know us, we're always looking to find a way to create something without plugins. And this is also my philosophy. So I've been asking myself if the great Saber plugin from Video Copilot can also be recreated with built-in effects. Why should you recreate an almost perfect plugin? First, you never know if plugins are being supported every time a new After Effects version comes out and there are so many examples of plugins that has been discontinued. And second, when you know on what an effect is built up upon, you will gain more control and you can even exceed the plugins possibilities. It's always good to be less dependent on third-party plugins. Now, let's jump right into After Effects. I assume you already know the Saber plugin from Video Copilot. First, I'm gonna create a new composition. Make sure that color depth is set to 16 bits per channel. Next, I'm gonna create a new solid and draw a mask path on it. And then I'm gonna apply the Saber plugin to the solid layer and set the core type to layer mask. And what you see right now are the default settings. Let's recreate this first, because this will be our basis to explore new styles. I'm gonna copy the mask path, create a new shape layer, add a path, paste the mask path into the path attribute and reposition it to the right. Then I'm gonna add a stroke and set stroke width to 6. The core size in the Saber plugin is 3, so you obviously need to double this value to get the same thickness. Let's apply a glow effect to it, set glow threshold to 75%, glow radius to 60, glow intensity to 3, glow colors to A and B colors, change color A to black and color B to 50% black, which corresponds to the hexa value of 80, 80, 80. This represents the strong inner glow. How did I come to these values? Just trial and error. By the way, I set it to gray values, which makes it easier to recolor it later. To create the decent outer glow, I'm gonna duplicate the effect and change glow threshold to 15%, glow radius to 300 and glow intensity to 10. Next, I'm gonna copy the glow color value of Saber, apply a tritone effect to the shape layer and paste the color value to the midtones. Now we have a better comparison. I'm gonna apply a fast box blur effect with blur radius set to 8 to make the transitions between the inner and outer glow more seamless. But unfortunately, I blurred the stroke as well. And this is why I'm gonna apply a CC composite effect that simply copies my original shape layer without all the effects and places it in front. But the stroke still looks weak, so let's uncheck RGB only. Also, the glow looks quite low. I'm gonna apply a solid composite with a color set to black to get rid of the transparent background. Let's set blend mode to screen for now so we can still compare it to the original Saber plugin. The solid composite effect is necessary for my next step. I'm gonna apply an exposure effect, set exposure to 1,55. Again, I determined these values via trial and error to adapt the brightness to the original Saber plugin. Without the solid composite effect, the exposure effect would falsify the colors. You can apply a non mod preset from the image utilities to restore the transparent background. Now we can set blend mode back to normal again. So, we just recreated the default settings of the Saber plugin. And that is a good starting point to recreate one of the presets. Let's take the core preset. Now, how do we get from the default look to the core style? As you can see, we already have a bunch of effects on the shape layer, and there will be a lot more effects to come. You would easily lose track of them. Maybe I could pre-compose the shape layer and start from here with zero effects. The problem is, when I want to adjust something in the default look, I always have to switch the composition. So let's undo this. I know a better way. I'm gonna toggle off the shape layer, create a new black solid, apply a calculations effect, set second layer to shape layer and second layer opacity to 100%. 
Now we have an exact copy of the shape layer. But to include the effects as well, I'm gonna set second layer to effects and masks. Then I'm gonna set blending mode to copy. Now all the changes in the shape layer will be adopted by the calculations effect. My first goal is to recreate the fractal patterns. And this is why I'm gonna apply a fractal noise, set contrast to 350, complexity to 3, and overflow to wrap back to get some extra details. Then I'm gonna copy the glow color from Saber, apply a tritone effect, paste it into the midtones, and then change the highlights to some kind of a pale orange. Well, doesn't look even close to Saber. So let's apply a turbulent displace effect. Set amount to 200, size to 20, complexity to 3, and place it above tritone. Then I'm gonna apply a fast box blur effect, place it above the fractal noise effect and set blur radius to 25 in order to soften the highlights a bit. Now I want to recreate these highlights surrounding the main stroke. I'm gonna duplicate the calculations effect, place it above tritone, set blending mode to screen and uncheck preserve transparency. Next I'm gonna duplicate turbulent displays, place it under calculations and set amount to 160. Then I'm gonna apply an exposure, place it below the turbulent displace effect and set exposure attribute to negative 1 to reduce the contrast. Now let's restore the main stroke by duplicating calculations and putting it below exposure. The glow seems a bit too strong, so I'm gonna select the shape layer, go to the first glow effect and change glow radius to 20. Go to the glow effect below and set glow threshold to 55% and glow radius to 150. Also, the main stroke is still too strong, so I'm gonna decrease the stroke width to 5. Let's go back to the solid layer and apply an exposure. I'm gonna place it above tritone, set exposure to 0,15, offset to negative 0,08 and gamma correction to 0,5. This way we regain contrast again. Now comes the final retouch. I'm gonna duplicate turbulent displays, place it below tritone, set amount to 40 and decrease size to 5 to roughen the stroke like in the Saber plugin and maybe adjust the midtones a bit. Okay, one last refinement because the main stroke is still looking too sharp. I'm gonna select the shape layer again, apply a fast box blur effect and set blur radius to 0,5. And what's still missing is the animation. So I'm gonna select the solid layer, go to turbulent displays, click on the offset stopwatch at frame 0, press U to reveal the keyframe, go to the last frame and change Y position to 240, which automatically sets another keyframe. I'm gonna copy the keyframes, go to frame 0, select the other turbulent displace effects, paste the keyframes and press U again to reveal the other keyframes to see if it's been done right. That's it! And I think it looks close to the original. From this point it's more or less easy to recreate the other presets because they are based on the same technique. Sometimes it's obvious what to adjust and sometimes you have to fiddle around with the parameters. Of course you don't know what's going on behind the scenes, so it won't be a pixel perfect copy of the original. But I'm sure that you always achieve a very similar result. There are attributes that can be easily recreated one by one, like the end size that can be done by the stroke taper settings or the offset attributes that you can achieve with trim paths. And there are other attributes that can be quite tricky and fiddly to recreate, like the glow fine tuning settings that make the Saber plugin so powerful. There are always workarounds to get to the desired result. And as I said before, you can do crazy things the Saber plugin isn't capable of, like making use of the additional shape operations. Hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please like my video, subscribe my channel and turn on the bell to get notified of more tutorials. See you next time.